the Billy Meyer case is 100% authentic, not only because his photos are authentic, photos are authentic, are authentic, are authentic. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Now, here's our prize fake UFO shot. And not only because his films are authentic, Bullshit. because skeptics, this man said to me, always get it backwards. Bullshit. Photographs never lie. No. But liars can photograph. The truth is, out there, people who read information online who don't have my experience. Bullshit. I'm going to present you an article whereby anybody can walk through it. Oh, yeah. Means, motive, opportunity, all the things, and come to their own conclusion at the end about the authenticity. Bullshit. There's a, a UFO guy named Kevin Randall who attacked the Meyer case. Joe Tisk called him up. He's a real person. Bullshit. Joe Tisk said, I looked into the case. I never said it was real. I never said that Horn could say I said it was real. And I've told Horn to stop using me as a source for proof of the story. And he said, by the time I was done with the conversation with Kevin Randall, not only had I demolished him, but I realized that the people in ufology don't understand how research works. Oh, shit. I would, I would say he doesn't understand how lenses work. No. no. Look. Guys, you have to t just let me neither try to prove nor disprove. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Michael, it's not that. I mean, uh, we, we've uh, got a ca we've got a, cam a, a camera guy that comes on the channel that is living is taking photographs. Yes. Stu Little, wish we'd have got Stu Little on tonight. Actually, yeah, I bet Stu, I bet Stu could really break that. Beetle. Stu. Beetle. Stu. It's showtime. Did somebody mention my name? Time to debunk this shit. Hi, I'm Stu. I've been a commercial photographer, filmmaker, and video editor for the past 31 years. Here's a little sample of what I do on the daily. In other words, Stu knows his shit. When it comes to photographic technique, lighting, and photo manipulation. I've been into UFOs since I was a kid. And in particular, I've been aware of the Billy Myers photos since the X-Files. Okay, so before we go on to the debunk proper, I need to explain to you a couple of different photography techniques. One being depth of field, the other being forced perspective. Now, I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. Basically, depth of field is how much of your image is in focus. And you set your depth of field using the camera's aperture which is similar to the human eye. In this image here that I shot of my friend George the Magician. He's about 10 feet away from the camera. He's in focus, background is out of focus. And this was shot at around f.56. I'll show you what that looks like on the aperture animation. Then we have this drone shot of my hometown. And as you can see, from the foreground to the background, the image is sharp front to back and this is because i used an aperture value of f16 and this gave me sharpness throughout the image just before i discuss forced perspective i just want to point out the cow in the foreground and the other cows in the background apart from the calves are roughly the same size and that means that anything that's close to the camera lens is going to appear bigger than anything that's further away and this is the kind of crux of how we use force perspective to trick the eye. Force perspective photography is basically shooting models, making them look full size and fooling the eye. We're taking 24th scale models, bringing them out into the world and trying to make them look as real as possible. 124th scale model was a half inch equals one foot in the real world. Yeah, basically, if you're a foot away from the model, you need to be 24 feet away from the background. 
And that's why, in this image by Myers, it looks so ludicrous. Because he just didn't understand how forced perspective should actually work properly. Plus he was using a camera that made it very difficult to control. But more on that later. My, my issue, this is another issue. So when we're talking this one here, you look at this car and you look at this this UFO. If that, I, I, I've heard, I've heard the people say that this is not a real car. This is a toy car. I, and I, I tend to agree with that. Okay, so this UFO, the wedding cake UFO, I should say, on the left is supposedly between 14 and 21 feet. I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and we'll go for the larger 21 feet in size. The camera Billy Myers used was the Olympus ECR. Well, what I've read about it, it had between a 40 and a 50 millimeter focal length. And also, depending on what particular model you got of the camera, sometimes you could adjust the aperture. So again, those funny numbers, f2.8 through to f11 or f16. But generally speaking, you didn't have any control over the shutter speed. So him having it on a tripod probably was doing himself a favour. Michael says that he was about 15 feet away from the craft. Now, if it was 40 millimetres, I think he would need to be around about 7 feet away to get this shot. And if it was a bit tighter at 50 millimetres, then he would actually need to be around about 15 feet. You can quite clearly see, and even if we zoom into this a little bit, we know it's close up. You know, you don't need to be a 30 year plus photographer to tell your brain that that is a small object that is close to the camera and you've got a building behind it. Trust your gut instinct, it's going to be quite correct. It's a bin lid, it's circular baking trays. The bottom's one of those cake tin things. It's, it's metal plates, it's Christmas baubles, and we can even see some stuck on jewels and stuff like that you can see the metal you can see the little loops which looks like little bits of spring or something i mean it's quite clearly a ridiculous looking model which might have fooled people in the 1970s but it, does, it doesn't fool anybody in 2023 because one if you look at the the size of this ufo in that yard and you look at the the, the scale with that car you can see that that ufo there to how this picture's been taken does not not look that big i couldn't take that picture of that car even if i tried that's, i wouldn't be fine. able to get go that look to, on that car that, go back to that screen and, and let's look for one second Could I, just a second how rude. Yeah. you see how clear that building is in the background in, on the photo on the left you see how clear mm -hmm. that is? is is it clearer than the ufo in the foreground yeah but uh, I, no, that's, because that, that's because that that's because that ufo is close to the camera and that building is far that's away correct. you keep using the horn i don't think it means what you think it means it's, but how it's, how how big how big did billy say the, the crafts were well that craft is is I think that one was supposed to be about, it's either 14 or 21 feet in diameter. Make up your mind, Michael. Is it 14 feet or 21 feet in diameter? Because he does not, he doesn't look that distance away from the house. Here is a QM9 Reaper drone. It is 36 feet in length and has a wingspan of just over 65 feet. <laughs> you can't get... Before I forget, Check out the three windows on the right. They may explain the light source you see on the right-hand image. More about that in a bit. I've been there. I know where that is in relationship to the house. That's why the thing is so big. Don't bullshit me. Meyer himself was 15 feet or so in front of this object. And if you look at the reflections in it, you well, I've been, I'll, okay, I'll believe them, but I'll, I will, I'll bring up a video because I've been. I'll tell you what, guys, for the sake of getting, you said you want to know if this is true or not. We will waste our time if we want to debate photographs. Oh, excuse me? Fallacies that you can, and you can take exception with them and you can come out with a whole thing saying you think all of Billy Myers' photographs are fake. I don't care. Michael, you might not care what the UFO community does, and we don't like fakers. I don't because think it's wasting time. Good. Okay, let's take a closer look at this one. Now, I've already surmised from the other image the size of this, and we've got pretty much proof through Phil Langdon. I think it was that that is some kind of trash can. I realized it was a lid from a trash can. 
I compared the lid with the spaceship and identified these lines as being exactly what is on the lid. But let's again say this is 21 feet across. We've then got what's supposed to be a Mercedes and that's going to be at least 12 or 13 feet long. Now, here's the problem with this. That car is too close to the camera to get that level of in sharpness. He's focused on the wedding cake UFO. You can quite clearly see there's next to no distance really between the car and the craft because of the nature of the 40 or 50 millimeter lens that he's using on the Olympus. Now, my issue with this image overall is actually and nothing to do with sizes it's more to do with and then there was light because for this specular highlight which is what we technically call these bright hot spots so for this specular highlight to be that size if this craft was 21 feet or give them the benefit of the doubt even just 14 feet the light source would have to be massive if you think when you are doing a photo with your iPhone these days, back in the day with a little point shoot camera, a little flash on the side, it's always a little pinprick of light and there's not enough light comes off of any of these kind of cameras, even the manual flash bulbs that used to put on the likes of the Olympus to make images like this, they're not bright enough. So they're going to be a little point of light. It's literally going to be a little hot spot like that. It's not going to be as wide as this whole area here. You're talking something that is multiple lights and several feet across to generate that. I don't even think you would get a light as big as that on a film set these days. Daylight is usually achieved with HMI lights, which are even stronger but have a cooler temperature. So that's the reason I know this is a model, all to do with the light. Obviously it's supposed to be photographed at night, so we know it's got the sun. This is huge. So the light's pretty close up, and if we actually zoom in to our little Christmas baubles, you can quite clearly see one, two... Remember the three windows on the first floor? Could they be the sources of light reflecting on the Christmas baubles? Two, three light sources. So they're probably windows, realistically, or three different lights. So that's the reason why this is as fake as can be. Here we have again another Myers image made and faked up. No, doesn't work for me. How is this done? Well, I think Phil Langdon's got it right. Phil Langdon possibly went further down the Billy Meyer UFO rabbit hole than any one of us. I think what it is, Billy has extended a monofilament, put it across the valley from tree to tree. Could have thrown it in the air, but to get it that horizontal, I don't think so. It would be more of an angle if it was doing that. Draw another line that way. It could be suspended from above with like so of fishing line or something like that. Once the paint and glue had dried, we gave the kids bamboo poles, fishing line and cameras. But more realistically, it's probably been done from point to point, from tree to tree. There's plenty of them about in the image to have that actually. And the craft is actually not that far away from the camera. And the field of view makes sense in terms of it's probably again 40 millimeters on the Olympus ECR. So you're going to get a shot like this. Okay, so how can you get this shot? Well, I'm going to let the kids in this video clip show you how they did it. Next, they took turns tossing and photographing a Cadillac hubcap. That's as sophisticated as we got, but the results were impressive. The children came up with several photos that could easily pass for classic UFO shots. And I think if it isn't already what we've discussed, which is a wire going across the valley, suspending the UFO, and click the shutter on the camera. Okay, we go into this final shot. No point in debunking any more than this. We're back to the wedding cake UFO, and quite frankly, it is a UFO that's either been suspended as before, horizontally using monofilament, or it's been suspended literally by shoving it in between pine tree branches. Now, if this craft is supposedly 21 feet in diameter, then that means I know from depth of field that the branch here and the branches here are really quite close to the UFO. This branch is not far far away because if it was far far away it would look like the car 
it would be close to the camera and it would be really out of focus and the pink cones would be even bigger than they actually are. The UFO model is stuck in between the branches and if this was 21 feet across that means these little guys here would be several feet and quite frankly I've never seen a pink cone bigger than a few inches along. So again this is as fake as can be, leaves right is ludicrous. You just don't need to be a rocket scientist and quite frankly not even a photographer or filmmaker with 30 years experience either. Go with your gut people, you know it's fake because it is fake. Thanks to Ollie and Lee for letting me make this short debunk video. I know I could have gone into an awful lot more detail but I felt that just covering the basics and obviously targeting the images that were looked at during the evening that Michael was on the show was kind of more important for me. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm active on Twitter and I also have an Instagram. The place where I'm most active though is on my YouTube channel. I teach video editing, photography, animation and also mobile filmmaking. So if you want to come over and check that out, feel free, come say hi and let me know that you came from the Alien Addict channel. See you later.